Hello everyone, welcome to our Getting Started in Cisco Packet Tracer walkthrough video. In this video, I get to show you the different features built inside of the program known as Cisco Packet Tracer. As we get started, we'll highlight some of the key components of using the Cisco Packet Tracer application. Let's begin by taking a look at the bottom toolbar, and I'm looking at the bottom left corner. Here we have a variety of different categories, and in each category, we're going to have options below. For example, the default category is Network Devices. That's selected by default. In the Network Device category, we'll find the subcategory of Routers. With Routers selected, we'll see a variety of different model routers available for us to put into our topology. If I click on the next item, it's Switches inside of our Network Device category. And then my list will now contain network switches that I can deploy inside of my topology above. The next category is hubs, followed of course by wireless devices, including then the next category of security, and then finally is and then finally is WAN emulation for a wide area networks. Outside of the network device category, we can find the next main category of end devices. If I click on end devices, our default subcategory is an end devices of different types of hosts and other equipment we can put on our network. There's another subcategory for end devices, which is home. And this brings in a lot of our smart network enabled IoT devices. We can go further by looking at citywide devices, which are under the category of smart city within end devices. If we continue on, the next component will be industrial and then even power grid all bringing some great features into Cisco Packet Tracer and the type of devices we can deploy in a network. To go even further into the realm of Internet of Things known as IoT, we have another main category known as Components. And in Components, you'll find a variety of different boards. Also, we have another subcategory for actuators and even sensors. These can be deployed in a network just like what we're doing now. To interconnect your devices, we'll be utilizing the Connections category. In the Connections category, we have two subcategories. We have Connections, which is our common type of cabling we'll be using. But also another subcategory is Structured Cabling. And here you will find items that are available in Physical View of Cisco Packet Tracer. And these will include patch panel connectors and wall mounts. The next category is Miscellaneous and here we will find some custom-made devices with components already installed. Lastly, the category of multi-user connection allows us to interconnect our Packet Tracer instance with others across a local area network or even a wide area network connection. Let's continue by creating a small network utilizing our Cisco Packet Tracer logical view. By default, we can see our packet tracer has opened in the logical view mode. This is where we can build a logical topology. I'm going to select the main category in the bottom toolbar of network devices. The default selection again is routers. And I'll go ahead and take a look at the routers available. At this time, I may want something like a 4331 Cisco router. I can click on that and then I can click in our logical topology. I can continue by deploying now a network switch. I will click on the subcategory for switches, and I'll click the first switch available. I will then click on my logical topology, and now it is ready. At this time, I'd like to add on two or three end devices. So I'll click on the category of end devices. The default subcategory of our end devices is already selected. And I will go ahead and take one PC and click it on, put it right in the logical topology, and one laptop. I will click and click on the logical topology. At this time, I'd like to interconnect these by utilizing our cabling. That is under our connections category. I will click on connections. The default subcategory of connections is already selected. And I will choose the appropriate cabling to interconnect these devices with the router and switch. I will use my straight through cable, which is the third option available. I will select it, click on my PC, choose the corresponding port of fast ethernet, 
and connect that to the switch. I can choose any available interface for network connectivity. I will repeat this by connecting the cable from the laptop, fast ethernet, to the switch on another available network interface. Lastly, I'll interconnect that switch to the router in our logical topology. I will grab the appropriate cable by clicking on it, click on an available port on the switch, and then connect it to the router on an available network connection. You will see indicator lights being shown here due to port status and connectivity. At this time, we have a small logical topology built. We will take a look at the physical topology of how we will be able to build a network and interconnect them in a physical view. I will click on the physical tab and you'll see a change. The change is our screen is a little bit taller. The bottom toolbar might be in the way. We will have our ability to scroll on the right side of our screen by the sliding tab. We can see that there's the PC that I have clicked and put in the logical topology along with the cable coming off of it. Also, we can see the laptop has been positioned on top of the PC. I can click and drag it and put it on the table next to the PC. If I scroll up, you'll see those cables from the PC and the laptop connecting to the switch. I can click and drag the switch and I can lower it on our network rack. That switch is connected to the router. I can click and lower the router on the network rack in order to organize these devices and cabling better. In the physical view, I have the ability to use my main toolbar and I have settings for zoom. I will click the magnifier glass with the plus to zoom in. Now you have a better view of the physical router with the cable that connects to the physical switch and then if I scroll down the physical switch with the two connections to the devices down below. If we want to manage our cabling, we'll right click on a network cable and we'll be presented with three options. We can delete the cable to remove it completely. We can color the cable a different color so we can identify the cable and thus identify any devices connected by that cable easier. Or we can select manage cable which will take the cable and will put it away nicely which provides us a nice and tidy workspace. In the real physical world that would allow us to organize our cabling, secure them appropriately and keep them from disconnecting or from being crimped. We cannot use Manage Cable at this time for any devices sitting on a table or on a shelf. We can only use this Manage Cable option when devices are on our network rack on the left side. At this time, I'll scroll up to the top and you can see that we have our switch and our router. I can right click on the switch and I can say Manage All Cables on Device. When I select that, you will see that the cabling between the switch and the router looks like it disappears. Instead, that is just keeping our cables nice and tidy between the actual switch connection to the upstream router connection. If I right click on that switch again, you'll see we have the options to inspect front, inspect rear, to delete the device, or to unmanage all cables on the device as well. By unmanaging all cables on the device, we see the interconnected cable between the router and the switch reappear hanging down on the front of our network rack. If I right click on that switch and select inspect front, we'll get a closer view of our network switch. Again, we have our magnifier glass options to zoom in. I will click on zoom in, and then I will scroll to the right and down with my packet tracer window. We can see that I have port 10 on the switch connected to a device. If I hover over that connection, we'll see it's connected to device PC0. We'll also see there's a link light on for port 20. If I hover over that connection, we'll see that this connection goes down to the laptop. And lastly, if I hover over the gigabit connection on the far right side of the switch, we'll see that this connects to device router zero. This is great information for us to be able to document and visualize our interconnected physical network. But also, if I close this off, again, we can just follow those cables and see where they interconnect to the devices. If I right click on the switch, we can also select inspect rear. 
When we click inspect rear, we will get a rear view of the Cisco switch. Again, I'll use my magnifier glass and we will be able to click and zoom in. Here we will see the console connection for us to complete our initial configuration of the switch. Also, you'll notice that there's no power button on the Cisco switch because the Cisco switch is automatically powered on once it is connected with a power cable. To remove power, we would unplug the Cisco switch from any power source. If I scroll back to the left side, we can do the same with router zero. We can right click and inspect front and we can zoom in and get a better view of the Cisco router and any connections as well as any available slots that we can install any new components or additional features on. I can right click on the router again and click on inspect rear and again I'll zoom in and here on the router we can see that we have an aux port, we have our console port as well as we have a management interface. On the right side, we'll see that we have a power button and the current status of the router is powered on. If I click the power button, the green light will turn off and the power is now disabled for the router. I click it on again and now the router is actually booting up since it has received power. I will click the X to close the rear view of the Cisco router. If we want to deploy new devices onto this current physical topology, we will use our bottom toolbar. I will select End Devices, and in the End Device subcategory, I would like to deploy a server. I can click on the server, and I will click on the network rack. That server is now deployed on the network rack. We can see that it is powered on, and that we have a network interface ready for connection. I will go ahead and click on Connections, and I will click on a straight through cable. When I click on the straight through cable, I will click on the network interface card for fast ethernet zero of the server, and then I will click on any port I would like to connect it to. If I want a closer view of what port I'm connecting it to, I can always right click on the switch and click inspect front and zoom in for a closer view. With the zoomed in front of the switch, I can easily identify what port of the switch I would like to connect to. For example, I would like to connect to port 24 which is FA0 slash 24 on this 2960 switch. When I click on that port, the cable is now connected. If you feel that the cable is getting lost, you can always right click on that cable and change the color as we mentioned earlier. I can make it red, for example, and click OK. And now it's much easier to find the connection from the server to that Cisco switch. This is the power of Cisco Packet Tracer utilizing the logical and the physical views. Please practice and enjoy using Cisco Packet Tracer for all of your network configurations and for any scenarios that you could possibly imagine and build.